show. Thanks for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're glad you're here. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications for new videos. If you are watching on Facebook, like and share this to your wall. Be sure to visit, like, and follow our Facebook page for fun posts, upcoming events, and community connection. Want to learn more about our ministry? Visit our website, GloriaDay.com. That's Gloria-Dei.com for podcasts, events, archived worship, activities for the family, and more. Thanks for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're glad you're here.
Hello and welcome to worship. We're so glad that you're here. On this weekend before Thanksgiving, there's a lot to look forward to. It's hard to believe, but Advent and Christmas are just around the corner. So I hope you have a wonderful week of Thanksgiving. And after Advent, we'll start this coming Sunday, November 28th. Between services, we'll have our Advent Fest, which will include a Mission Sunday element. And so we'll have arts and crafts for families, things like wooden nativity sets to make, Advent calendars, foam Advent wreaths, and even some take-home devotions for the season. We'll also be filling stockings for our neighbors at Family Promise Rochester and tying some fleece blankets for the Women's Shelter and Support Center. Finally, we'll be helping to change over threads for the winter season. As a part of Advent, between the Living Advent wreath, which you'll hear more about soon, and the choral arts coming in, and the chorale that you may, the uh, cantata, excuse me, that you may be used to, the space in the sanctuary will require some shifts, and so we'll be experimenting together with a different layout at all three of our services in person. Today, as you may know, as I hope you know, is Commitment Sunday. So go ahead and fill out your intent card and send it in the mail or do it online. More about that later in the service as we celebrate what God has in store as we pave the way forward as Gloria Day together. Finally, looking ahead to next summer, we have our middle school mission trip coming up and we're heading to my stomping grounds, the Quad Cities in Iowa and Illinois. This trip will be June 26th to July 1st, 2022, and the cost will be $150. That's it, with a $50 deposit due with registration. Register by December 3rd, that's what we're hoping for to get our numbers. The trip is still led by YouthWorks and will include all sorts of service projects and fellowship opportunities. Finally, as is appropriate on this weekend before Thanksgiving, we'll gather at the Lord's table this morning for online worship. So go ahead and grab those elements now, come back and sing. There's nothing worth more than will ever come close. No thing can compare your our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood Nothing worth more than will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood Oh, 
Good morning, everyone. It's good to be with you for a few moments today for Looking Within. Today, Pastor Marla will be sharing about Gideon, a biblical hero and judge of Israel who won battles through skillful planning and faith rather than military strength alone. Though we may not be called to face actual armies, there are plenty of battles in life that we do engage in in various areas of life. The story of Gideon serves as a reminder of how best to partner with God. We often think we're the major partner in something, don't we? Or even that we're carrying something all alone. Sometimes we treat God as the slave and we're the master. Or we become like Aladdin, calling the divine genie out of the bottle when we need some help. But there is a wisdom in moving away from these approaches seeing God instead as the major partner in all that we do. We are the one just coming along for the ride, following the real leader. We are the watcher, not the one dictating the next steps. Sometimes individually or collectively, we do something or decide something, and then we pray after the fact that God will bless what we've decided to do. But this is backwards from how life really best would play out for us. Though we do have things given to us to do or to figure out, we are only the junior partner in our partnership with God. God is the one carrying us and leading us. Life is much less exhausting when we're not trying to carry the whole world on our shoulders. Instead, letting God lead and guide and do the heavy lifting in our lives. As our singing bowl sounds now, take a deep breath or two and think about making it a practice to relinquish the role of leader and senior partner and enjoy the life-giving freedom of letting God be the leader in your partnership together. Good morning. Today is a special day. Today is Commitment Sunday. It's that day when we come together as a church to remember the year that we've faced and remember all that we've accomplished together, all the things that God has done in us and through us. And we make new commitments to each other to and to the mission that God has called us to. It's that day that we look each other in the eyes and we say, well, look at that. We're still here. So go ahead and turn to someone you're worshiping with or send a text to someone that you know is worshiping at the same time and tell them, look at that. We're still here. That's right. We're still here. At this time last year, no one was here. No one was vaccinated. Every time we met, we met online. Christmas was online. Easter was online. Every time we share communion, it was in our houses or in our cars. In late spring, we started worshiping together, but outside in the parking lot. It wasn't until midsummer that we finally returned to the sanctuary, and for a brief time, we were unmasked. Nevertheless, even masked, we continue to worship together week by week, month by month, whether online or in person. We continue to care for each other and our community. We continue to respond to the needs of others, and we continue to be Glory Day Church because we are better together. Not only are we still here, we are strong and growing stronger every day. Which brings us to today, Commitment Sunday. Today, you're invited to recommit yourself to the life and ministry of the church by making a monetary commitment of support. There are financial needs at Gloria Day, so we're inviting you to make a promise to financially support Gloria Day, just as you have committed to support Gloria Day with your time and with your skills and with your talents. 
if you're like me, there are two questions that bubble up in your mind whenever you're invited to participate in an endeavor like this. The first question is, I don't really matter, so what difference does my help make? And the second question is, I have so little to give, so what difference does my help make? To answer these questions, let me tell you the story of Gideon from the Old Testament in the book of Judges. It was a time in Israel's history when they were under attack by the Midianites and others like Amalekites and such. The enemy camp was so big, the Bible describes them as a swarm of locusts with men and camels too many to count. Because of the presence of the enemy camp, the Israelites were hiding in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever they tried to plant crops, the enemy army would swoop in and destroy the crops and kill or steal all the livestock, leaving the Israelites to starve. It was very dark days for the Israelites. So Israel cried out to, the, to God and God sent an angel of the Lord to a man named Gideon as he was threshing wheat in a wine press. The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior, the angel told Gideon. Gideon probably chuckled at this as he was literally standing in a hole in the ground trying to thresh wheat hiding from the enemy. It's as if he was hiding under the blankets while thieves were, were robbing his house. He was definitely not being very brave. The angel spoke again. Go in the strength of yours and deliver Israel. That's when Gideon asked the first question I mentioned earlier. What difference does my help make? I don't really matter much in the grand scheme of things. Actually, he said, how? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my clan. Imagine, if you will, a pimply, scrawny, knobby-kneed middle school kid with his shoes untied and his glasses askew being chosen captain of an NFL football team. Gideon was the least likely choice in all of Israel. But God saw in Gideon a mighty warrior. He was the right man for the job because God is the right God for the job. The angel replied, I will be with you. You shall strike down all of the Midianites, every last one. Boom, done and done. So if you're asking the question, I don't really matter. So what difference does my help make? Remember, that's what Gideon said too. There isn't a person in this room, in these houses, in our community, who isn't capable of being used by God to do mighty things. It's simply a matter of straightening our glasses, pulling up our tube socks, and getting out of the hole we are hiding in. So Gideon amasses a reasonably large army, he blows the trumpet to war and 32,000 soldiers gather to fight the Midianites. It's still significantly less soldiers than the enemy army has, but they ready themselves for a battle nevertheless. But then this happened. Let's read from Judges 7, 2 through 8. The, Lord's, the Lord said to Gideon, the troops with you are too many for me to give to the Midianite, give the Midianites into their hand. Israel would only take the credit away from me, saying, my own hand has delivered me. Now, therefore, proclaim this in the hearing of the troops. Whoever is fearful and trembling, let them return home. Thus, Gideon sifted them out. 22,000 returned home and 10,000 remained. Then the Lord said to Gideon, the troops are still too many. Take them down to the water and I will sift them out for you there. When I say this one, this one shall go with you, he shall go with you. And when I say this one shall not go with you, 
he shall not go with you. So Gideon brought the troops down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, All those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps, you shall put to one side, and all those who kneel down to drink, putting their hands to their mouths, you shall put to the other side. The number of those that lapped was 300. But all of the rest of the troops knelt down to drink the water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 that lapped, I will deliver you. <sighs> Let all the others go to their homes. So he took the jars of the troops from their hands and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of the Israel of Israel back to their own tents and retained the 300. The camp of Midian was below him in the valley. So to summarize, they started with 32,000 soldiers, but God said, send home those who are fearful. Boom, 22,000 soldiers go home. In one failed swoop, they lost two thirds of their army. They still have 10,000 people left to battle an innumerable army. But then God says, mm, still too many. So Gideon leads them to the water and separates those who cup their hands to drink from those who lap like a dog. And God says, send home the rest, but keep the 300 dog lappers with you. Gideon was left with less than 1% of what he started with when God finally said, good enough. But here's the thing, and this is the most important thing for us to understand. And conveniently, it's also the answer to our second question. I have so little to give, so what difference does my help make? God can do amazing things with just a little bit. Every little bit that you have to give matters. Let me say this again. God can do amazing things with just a little bit. Every little bit that you have to give matters. Whenever someone fills the little pantry out front at the, our north entrance, someone from our community gets to eat. Whenever people volunteer to serve communion, we all get to eat. Harold volunteers to play the organ. Pat leads the choir. Chris leads the band. Ella unlocks the doors and makes coffee. Jan donates to the threads closet. Families volunteer to help with Afghan evacuees. And we all give what we can give, even if it's a little, in the offering plate. Every little bit matters because God can do amazing things with just a little bit. I have so little to give. So what difference does my help make? It makes all the difference in the hands of God. Now, do you want to know what happened to Gideon and how God defeated the Midianite army with just 300 soldiers? Well, the enemy was stationed in the valley. So Gideon divided his troops into three groups of a hundred and sent them in the dead of night to three precipices around the valley. Nobody carried a sword. Nobody carried a shield. Instead, they each carried a torch covered by a clay jar to hide the light and a trumpet. On Gideon's count, they slammed their torches to the ground, blasting the 300 torches of light and blew with all their might on the trumpets. The suddenness of the chaos sent the troops in the valley into a frenzy. And in their confusion, they fought each other to the death. It doesn't get any better than this. All this to say, yes, you are the right person to step up. And even, and, and even if you can only give a little, 
your contribution definitely matters. God can do amazing things through you. It's simply a matter of straightening our glasses, pulling up our tube socks, and getting out of the hole we've been hiding in. Now, during communion, you'll be invited to pause the video, to go to the Gloria Day website and fill out the online commitment card. Prayerfully consider how much you're able to give this year toward what God is doing at and through Gloria Day. And as you do, remember, it matters and you matter because God can do amazing things through any and all of us. Thank you for giving at Gloria Day. Amen. Please join me for a word of prayer. God of love and abundance, in this season of Thanksgiving, we give thanks for all the ways that you have blessed us and cared for us, loved us. Especially today, we give thanks for the ways that we are able to, to be generous and to bless the mission and work of Gloria Day through our giving intent cards. We are indeed blessed and blessed to be a blessing. May your love be known through our community and our ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As people hit the roads for this holiday week that is upon us, we pray for safe travels and good gatherings. Keep us safe as we celebrate. We also pray for those who struggle during the season, whether it is with grief or loss or need. God, send your spirit of grace and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are dealing with illness and in need of healing and strength during this time, especially today. We pray for Larry Danielson, Tiff Deck, LaVon Massey, Dorothy Gressif, and all the other people we name silently on our hearts and in our minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to the pandemic as it continues on and on. We especially pray for all the doctors and nurses and hospital staffs and frontline workers. Be with them in their work. Be with all of us as we look for an end to this pandemic season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All of these things, God, and whatever else you see that we need, we pray in your holy name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Today, as we receive the Lord's Supper, I want to invite you to think about how much can you give this year? How much would put you in a place where you get to see God's power at work? How much is even a little more than you've given before? Think about that as we receive the provisions that God has provided for us. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and after he'd given thanks, he broke it and offered it to them saying, this is my body, it's been broken for you. And in the same manner, he took the cup and after he'd given thanks, he offered it to them saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now we invite you to pause the video for a moment and go to the website and consider how much you're able to give by filling out the online commitment card. 
don't worry, we'll still be here when you get back. Thanks for being with us this morning in worship, everyone. It's so good to gather with you each week across the airwaves at 9.30 each Sunday on either Facebook or YouTube. Today was Commitment Sunday, so a special Sunday here at Glory Day. Uh, we're so glad you were a part of it. And um, have a wonderful week as we head out from this place today and you from, from your place. Let me send you with these words of benediction as you go out as Christ's hands, feet, and heart into the world this week. May the beauty of Christ be reflected in your eyes. The compassion of Christ be reflected in your hands. The wisdom of Christ be reflected in your words. And the love of Christ be reflected through your heart, that all might feel the love and connection that's, that unites all of us in Christ. Amen. 
Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.